Good morning. Before I get into the rest of what I was going to do today, I'm going to widen out the circle around this pear tree because that cabbage and broccoli is growing so nicely. I'd be very disappointed if the uh, hairs came along now and started chewing on it. So I'll widen it out and then I can put my ring of sticks further out. The slugs are coming. I have to get some more material. I'll show you the finished product when I'm done. There. Now I get the hair is back from it a little more. No more worries about that. This now I'm going to clean out. As I've been telling you, it was part of the overgrowing thing during the four year absence. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this. I need to have gloves on because there's stinging nettles in among this. And basically, I'm going to pull out what's there. Most of it will just break off because it's hard soil here. And I uh, the roots will still be in the ground. And I'll throw the material back here. I'll run over this and of course the grass needs to be mowed again too. The meadow. And the clippings I'll put back as a mulch. You get the idea, no need to sit and watch me pull the weeds out of that whole bed. Going down this side now, I can just throw it back there on that mulch and leave it there. I haven't shown you the chives yet. They're flowering. This is where the chives were when this was a herb garden. I have one baby Pam pumpkin plant here that's growing. I'm hoping that it's going to give me a pumpkin this year. Back to our flower garden here. This is how it turned out. So now the ideal is that I'll mow some of the meadow and I'll put a pile out there and then I'll layer it all in among these flowers that's growing here. It'll smother some of this vegetation right away and the other vegetation, there's a lot of it that its roots are not deep. 
so as the mulch decomposes it'll build up a human slayer and the roots then that are deeper they'll die off and be replaced by roots higher in which case they'll be easier to pull out when I go and uh, attempt that so I'll do some mowing right now now I'll just bring the bag here and dump it out Like I said, poke it in among flowers. Just like that. Here's my first attempt at doing something with this flower bed. Got the I have the mulch tucked right in around the flowers. And the camera falls out of its order. Now, as I said in a previous video, these raspberry plants here, that is the golden raspberry spreading up this way. They are really prolific bushes. They're only two years old and they're already spreading. I have to decide on what is the best tool to lower the other vegetation here because I, I lower the vegetation and like I said mulching around the plants that I want to keep. I'm thinking that a side, not a scythe, a uh, sickle would be the best for this. I can grab a bunch of grass and then cut it right off at the base. Line trimmer, on top of you have an eye chance of accidentally cutting down one of the raspberry bushes. It flies material everywhere and chews it up. Right now I'm going to pull up some grass and just throw it out there on top of the uh, wood chips here. I don't know if I'm going to work with those uh, stinging nettles or not. I have a pair of gloves there if I am. But I'll show you now a little closer up. Before I do, this is the Dills Atlantic Giant. The plant is not growing very well and you can see it did get quite the hit when I put it out here. But it is starting to vine out. That one male flower open and closed. This one will be open, I guess, tomorrow. There's a female flower right here. If that one grows to full maturity and opens, then I'll have an open female flower early. Usually, I won't get that until another two weeks from now. So, I'm expecting this flower to just dry up. And here's the raspberry bushes. Just a few. They're not in among this grass much yet. And you've seen on an earlier video 
there's rhubarb here somewhere. It was out in plain sight. I mean, I did that video. You remember the dock plant? And there's the rhubarb. Huge rhubarb leaf right there. So I'm going to pull up some of this so I can show you the huge leaves on both that dock plant and the rhubarb. But as for these stinging nettles growing up through this brush pile. That will make this brush pile an excellent home for meadow voles, which, as I've said in the past, keeps them from wandering through the garden all the time. And uh, for the most part, they stay out in the grass and forage out from this area. So I'll just pull up this grass and maybe some of the stinging nettles and I'll bring you back when I'm got it sufficiently cleared. My hands actually done quite well. I don't think I need to actually buy a tool. My hands are doing quite well as a tool. So I've got it the grass, I pulled it up and then when I made an empty spot, the next lot I pulled up, I just threw down in the empty spot. So that'll be my chop and drop. I did the same thing with the stinging nettles. And I was clearing this away. That's a big rhubarb leaf. Let's see if I can switch hands here. There you go. One rhubarb leaf. And here's a leaf of a dock plant. The seeds, these are far from ripe yet. Actually, they're still flowers. So the fruit is not even started. Once the fruit gets ripe, you can dry it up, grind it, seeds and all, into a flower. I wonder... I want to get the biggest rhubarb stock. This one's got some bird dirt on it. Just a little peek at my pineberry plant here. The plant is growing well. Hopefully in the uh, late August it puts out a flower and a, see a berry for me. Well, that's more or less the way I can extend this. I'll let nature spread those plants that nature will spread and these other plants that she's putting there for me they're my chop and drop and that'll be it thank you for watching